Hello friends, uh, this is Ashton and uh, this video I think is going to be the last part for the live coding project 11 and uh, in today's video we're going to fix some issues we didn't fix in last part in part B okay so as you can see here uh, we have this login and we can use the data at the back end let me copy the email address and the password so we can log in with the data which we saved in our Google spreadsheet and uh, we can if we if we reload the page uh, the application should log in automatically right and uh, you can log out and uh, you can try to log in with another user uh, should work fine so this part C is mainly focused on this part so basically to uh, fix some issues we didn't uh, fix in the last part right so right now you uh, after you completed the part C you should have a basic application structure like this with this authentication functionalities built in okay this is looks like a template and uh, you can try to build your application based on this part okay and here I have an example uh, I have an applica application called approvals and uh, if I try to log in with my, my account okay I think it's Ashton I should uh, have more data here because this is uh, this looks like a real application because I built add more content here uh, for this application like the user management right you can add users you can add new users something like that and this uh, I as the last part of this video I explained this uh, project a little bit but this is the case the use case you can think of okay basically you can do uh, something similar to this one and uh, you can try to build your own project okay so this is a very quick preview about the part b so basically in part b we add a authentication process to our application so we can log in with a password as the password so you can log in uh, to your application and uh, you can log out okay so this is the main features we added in our part B so to start the part C here today so let's make a copy of the part B here first and uh, we can keep a record for the part B just in case you are uh, you are checking the video of part B so you can have a copy always and let me rename this to part C okay so I'd like to deploy it create a new deployment new version for development and me anyone should have the access and deploy it so we can work on this part C because we have some problem to solve in this part C so authorize this app Okay. Because uh, in Part B we have some, we only build the basic structure, but we have some pending issues that was was not resolved in Part B because uh, it's a long video in Part B. So I'd like to pay, make a new part for this uh, project and trying to solve some problems which was not solved in Part B. So here we have a new copy. Uh, for the Power B and uh, we should be able to grab the test the development app URL here in this, this test de de development here we have the URL and I'd like to change this name here to Power C so we can see 
the difference here and let me save it and then reload the page so we can have this application the title change to part C okay so let's try to log in here and the password is password okay so now uh, it's working but we are in part C now so let's solve the problems one by one okay so the first problem here I'd like to solve uh, you may already notice that uh, if you logged out and uh, you can basically log in with an email address here any email address it doesn't matter if it's actually an email address so if you put a password here you can log in to this application so basically uh, this is just a basic process so in part we, we only based, uh, build the, the basic structure of this authentication process but we didn't apply the backend here using this password here in our database to check if the user is there or not if this email address is there or not so the first issue here we'd like to solve we need to check the email address you enter in the front end okay when you are trying to log in here you have an email here and you have a password here so basically I'm going to use the email you entered at the front end and I'm going to check if this email address is, is listed here so basically the logic is very simple if the email address cannot be found here we're going to send the end user uh, error message right if the user can be found with this email and we can check we can compare this password with the password user entered here okay so let's do this and uh, to do that you need to go to the uh, login here this function here so as you can see we have an email and a password which is assigned from the front end and here I only check the password with this hard-coded password so that's why we can log in with this password here so here I need to first const we need to get the user right and this dot get user by let's say get user by email okay and I'd like to pass the email here because this get user by email is not defined so we need to define this function here called get user by email and we take a parameter which is the email right so this function is going to return it's either going to return a valid user or null so basically if a user cannot be found uh, we, we, we cannot return a user like that so to do that first of all I'd like to give uh, I'd like to get the uh, we have a tab here called users right so first of all let's grab maybe let me zoom in a little bit okay so const a uh, worksheet uh, is equal to uh, this dot database get sheet get sheet by name so the name is going to be users right maybe I can give it a constant here call sheet sheet a name you can define it here and for users let's pass it here users so we can use this value called config sheet name dot users all right so we code it here because maybe we need to use it in somewhere else so it's better to do it in this way and uh, if the worksheet worksheet cannot be found then we're going to uh, throw a new error okay I'm going to throw an error and that error message is going to be was not found in the database so basically simple error handling here and I'm going to place the, the name of the, the sheet to sheet to, the, to here 
So basically, these sheet name cannot, find, cannot be found in the database. So that's just a very quick error handling. Uh, if we do have this worksheet, and we can get const worksheet, let's say, let's grab the headers and uh, records from uh, the worksheet.get data range. I'm going to get the values. Okay, so this is the data range is going to be like the use it range, and here is your use it range uh, for the users. And the first row is going to be the headers, and the rest of the items I call it uh, record, or you can say items. Like uh, I like to keep it uh, like records, and these headers. I also can name it as keys, okay? Because these keys, I'm going to use it a, a key ID, key of ID, or key of name, so something like that. Uh, what we can do here, I'd like to get the index of email, okay? So const index of email is keys index of email okay so this is the uh, key for email and uh, we find this and if what if this index cannot be found right so if it's equal to negative one that means this email is not present is not present in this uh, in your database okay so this is another error handling. So we're going to throw new error. Uh, you can say email uh, header email was not found in the table okay so you can do it you can customize this message to your end users so all right so uh, after we have this index and we can find a record right so const record equal to record dot find and the value value index of email so this is going to be the email uh, value, okay? So let's go to, uh, is equal to, I'm going to compare this email to with this one, right? So if this email equal to this one, uh, if you want to apply some, uh, make, uh, make it compare it with case insensitive, Maybe you need to do something like this. So email equal to email dot to string. Uh, maybe trim. I like to trim it and change it to lowercase. Something like that. So this email right now is in lowercase, and in the same way, for this email in our database, uh, let's make sure we compare it with a. Uh, and trim it just in case, and uh, go to, to lowercase, right? So basically, we compare it with the lowercase and uh, going to remove the spaces at the beginning and at the, at the end of the email, just in case you have some data which is not that clear, it's not that clean, okay? And uh, if there is no record, I'm going to throw a new throw a new error. Okay, so that means uh, user. Uh, actually, I'm going to return an empty string here. So basically, return nothing, or you can return the record, which is undefined. Okay, 
because the email, if the email cannot be found, it can return returned here. So if we have a record, we can return we can return user by creating object here. So let's return this dot create item object. So this function is not created here. So I'd like to use the keys and the values. The value is going to be the record. Okay. So this is going to return an object. So let's create this function. Create an item object with keys and uh, values. So here I'm going to uh, make a constant item as uh, object and keys or for each for each key and index I'm going to item key is uh, equal to values index I'm going to return this item okay so this is going to create an item object so basically uh, the value is going to be a row of values in your database right so let's say we have a row 4 here uh, which is Karen and uh, we have a keys here so we can create object for Karen with ID of 3 name of Karen email uh, for this Karen here right so we create an object for Karen something like that so here uh, if we find a record here so we create a object user object with this record and with these keys so we can return the data like that so here this function is going to return a user object so if there is no user if there is no user I'm going to return a object called a something like that so success uh, actually I'm going to throw an error okay uh, let's say email is not valid because we cannot find a user with the same address so let's say you can you can add a error message basically like this way okay so if we do, uh, have a user and we can grab the user password here right so now we can compare this password if this password is not equal to user dot password I'm going to return actually here I'm not going to return I'm going to uh, throw another error let's throw new error let's say um, invalid credentials invalid in valid credentials okay and else I'm going to return uh, return an object with data with user okay so here I uh, have the data for the user maybe we can just return the user and I'd like to you know what I'd like to add a token here for this user so I'm going to create a function here uh, called uh, create token with the user here I'm going to generate a token here so const token equal to so for now you can apply uh, the, the token algorithm for your application so for now I'm going to use a UID here so utility uh, get UID I'm going to generate a UID for this token and uh, I'm going to return it return this token okay so you don't have to use this user but if you want to save some user information to your token and uh, you need to pass this user as a parameter here and uh, after we logged in here right 
we can create cost token equal to uh, this dot create token and we pass a user here and uh, user dot token or you can say user dot token uh, equal to this create a token for this user I'm going to pass this user to uh, this token to this user object and I'm going to lastly I'm going to return this user right so this is our logging uh, function here but I'd like to make this user as a property in this object so let's return user as a this way uh, just in, because we we maybe need to return something else not only for the user so if you want to return something else like when you after you logged in right you can maybe you can return that token even this token is already in this uh, user uh, object so you can do it in this way so right now we this is login function here uh, we can log in with the data in our database so let's verify it if this is working or not okay I think I need to do something at the front end uh, so in this store let's try to do a search for login so we don't have this success anymore okay because we return if, if there is any error you're going to catch the error here all right so we always in this try in this try block we always have a success the data from the back end and here uh, we're going to have the user and token uh, because if we check the back end uh, the success data we return is the uh, user and the token, right? So here uh, we have the user, we have the token, and I'm going to update the user with this value. And then uh, you can console log the user out, so you can check the values for this user and validate it. All right. So let's try to test it. And need to reload the page. So I can test it with a test email address here. Uh, this email is not even in the database, so we can try it and say error uh, test at gmail.com is not valid. That's because this email address cannot be found in our database. All right, so let me try to this one. Uh, and I'm going to put a uh, 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 invalid email address so we should get a uh, so basically the error message is going to be the invalid error uh, invalid uh, credential so that's basically what we defined in invalid error credentials right and finally let's try to use this password here I hope I can hmm token is not defined okay I know const token const token and user dot token is equal to token so let's try to log in again so now okay message is not defined uh, this is the uh, front end error. This message is not defined. We don't have a message like this. So we can replace this message with uh, with uh, something like uh, welcome and a user dot name. So we can grab the name from the user object right so we can have a message like this and this is the error message so let's try to log out and uh, do this login again okay I need to reload the page because I did some change uh, 
as a front end. So every time you do some change at, uh, for the front end, you need to reload the page. But for the back end, you don't have to refresh your page and copy the password and try to log in. Okay, so you now get this message, welcome. I have my name here and try to log out and let's try to verify it with another account. Maybe let's try to say, try Mia here. Uh, here, however, I need to update this because the same address is exactly the same. Uh, so let's try the second one. Uh, the password uh, is actually the same. So now uh, Mia is logged in, right? So basically, this is the solve the problem here. So right now you can use the data at your backend. And uh, this is the basics, okay? Uh, I'm not going to handle this password because this password should be hashed. You cannot save the password, the actual, the real password here in this way. So you need to hash this password with something like uh, add a hash uh, in, your, in your string and parse it with some, some encode it, something like that, okay? And another thing, uh, we have a username here. You also can use this username uh, because right now we are trying to log in with the email email address, right? You also can implement uh, the username in your login. So that's a very easy to do, I think. You need to handle the uh, login function at the back end because this email could be a uh, username so you can change the backend code, the logic here. All right, so this is about how to fix the issue. Uh, you use the password at the database here. Okay, so let's try to uh, fix the second problem here. So here, if I log in with the user, let's say this one, and the password is uh, password pwd12345 and uh, right now I'm logged in and uh, if I try to reload the page and uh, <laughs> so as you can see uh, your browser didn't re uh, didn't uh, save your login status so this is the issue I'd like to solve here so to do that remember we have a token return from the from the backend right and uh, in our store here we have uh, login here so after we log in I'd like to save this token okay we have a token here so I'd like to create a utility function here uh, let's say utils dot save token or something like that The function is going to be the token. I'd like to define a key here for some utilities. So basically, we have a token. We have a token key, and uh, the key we're going to be. So you can set up any name you like. A token key or underscore token, something like that. So I'm going to set. I'm going to use this token here because. Uh, this is the key for the token uh, which is going to be saved to our local storage right and here we have the token and I'm going to save it you know try catch block so I'm going to use local storage dot set I think is a set item and the key is going to be utilities dot key dot token okay so this is the key for the token and the value is going to be the token all right so if the token is the object if type of token uh, is object I'm going to 
parse it as a string. Okay, I'm going to stringify it. So token equal to JSON stringify the token and save it because this I think this only accept the, the, the string values. Right? So this is going to save our uh, token and if, if there an error I'm going to pass it here or console.log the error. Load the error. So token and save it to our uh, local storage and we need to have another function uh, to get the token or this name let's change it to set token set token get token and here we don't need to pass any parameters here and uh, let's try it in a catch block catch try catch block copy this part and here I'm going to use the local storage and here I'm going to get item with the key the key is going to be utilities key token and I'm going to return this this token here okay set token get token so we have this function right and in our store after so basically this is logging after we logged in I'd like to uh, utilities dot set token and pass the, the token here so this this is going to save the token to our browser to the lo local storage of our browser okay in this, for this application so let me reload and let me show you where you can find the token so let's grab an email password login if I inspect the page here and uh, in the console log here this is not about the data so here if you go to the network not the network the application where is the application application and then you go to the local storage and if you check this one so you have a underscore token and this is the value this is the UUID we generated had at the backend. Remember at the backend here, uh, we have a function here to create token for this user, and now we have this token generated with a, for a UUID, right? And uh, we save and we return it back to the front end, and at the front end we save it here. Okay. So, so every time when we try to log in. Okay. Uh, we need to pass the, this token. So in case we have some token here, we can pass the token uh, with these parameters. So every time we log in, and here let's try to do it here. Not here, I think. The login function, let me try to search the login. Okay. So this is the login view, right? So in this login view, we don't have this. So every time when we are trying to log in, we use email and the password. And every time we reload this page, we also need to log in, but not with the email and the password we try to log in with our token we saved to our local storage so basically that's the logic and where we can we uh, try that function we can add it somewhere uh, when the application is created and I think it's in this function here so we can copy 
uh, where is my router? We can copy this function here and we pass. So when, when this application is created, right? That's every time you uh, create it, every time you reload the page. And uh, we, we'd like to call this function here. So I'm going to try to log in, but not with email and password. We log in with the uh, token. If the token, if we have a token, so const token equal to uh, utilities dot get token. And if we have a token, we try to, if we have a token, we're going to try to log in with this token as a parameter. And we need to update this login function here. So let me show you, uh, try to make a log here. Uh, console.log the token here, so you will see what I'm doing here. So right now, if I try to re refresh this page, cannot read trim of undefined. And if you check the, we have a token here, right? But the error message because we ha we need to handle uh, the login function here at the back end because uh, right now we are trying to log in with email and password and uh, sometimes we have the we need to log in with this lo uh, uh, this token right if if we have a token here we need to we need to this dot validate token. So we need to validate our token, right? And I'm going to const result. So basically I'm going to validate this token. If the, if the token is valid, if it's not valid, or is valid token, if it's not a valid token, I'm going to throw new error. I'm going to say the token is invalid. This login again. Okay, so this uh, in this case the token is invalid, right? And what, what if the token is valid? And we can lock in the user directly. And I'm going to return a user and the token. So the user here, uh, we need to do something here. Because right now we have the token, but we don't have the email address. So we need to save some data in our, uh, so basically here I'm going to use this dot get user by email. So the email token, we need to save some data in this token, okay? So here uh, we have the user So when we create this user, uh, sorry, not create the user, when we create a, uh, a token, I'd like to save the user's, user's email in this token, okay? Uh, how can we do that? We can use some, seem like, uh, we can save it in a cache. Okay, so let's use the cache, prop, uh, cache service. And I'm going to get the script, uh, script cache. Okay, I'm going to say, so we generate this token, right? And this dot cache dot put. I'm going to put, I'm going to use this token as a key for this cache and the value I'm going to use the user dot email. Okay, so basically I'm putting the user's email in this cache 
and the token is the key. And uh, when we try to validate the user, I'm sorry, trying to val validate the token, uh, we can grab the user's email in this cache. And we need to put a validate time for this cache. So the maximum uh, valid for the time is, uh, I think it's six hours. Okay, so let's try to do it here. Make a variable called uh, cache the expired in in second. Okay, in seconds. So where is my token? Let's create token. I need to pass. Uh, uh, expiration in seconds. So here I'm going to use a config dot cache expired in seconds. So six hours. So if you want to keep your lock in something like that. So right now it's six hours. Okay. So here we, we basically save uh, our token and uh, user email address in our cache. Okay. I'm going to return this token. And uh, this is about the create token function here. And we also need to, the token is already line 55. Line 55, the const token, token is being already, okay. So, Validate token. We also need to create this function token. And uh, we can check const cache or token or email equal to this.cache.get. And we can get a user key. Remember here, uh, this token, uh, this cache to put, we, we put this. Uh, we created a cache with a key for this token, right? So we can get the cache with this token. And if there is no email, I'm going to return false. And uh, if we have this email, I'm going to return email. Because we saved the user's email in our cache, right? And here I'm going to uh, if this is valid, I'm going to reset the cache, the validation here. So this cache dot put and a token, the email, and uh, I'm going to reset the validation time for this for this cache. Okay, and uh, it return the email. Here, return false, or you return nothing here, it should be fine. Uh, so this is the function to validate the token. So here uh, is a valid token, actually the email, or the result is valid token. So this is valid token is weird. Mm. I'm going to, so this is actually, is either, the, re, the is a valid token, it could be, uh, undefined, uh, no value here because if the email, if there is no email, I'm going to return false, right? And if we do have an email, we're going to return the email, so the email is true, and then we're going to return this email uh, with this function. So validate token. If it's not valid, I'm going to return an error message, and if it's valid, this valid valid token is actually the email. So we can get user by email with this is valid token. So this right now here, this valid token is actually the email address. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to explain here. Uh, so we get the user from the backend, and this is the user, and this is a token, and uh, we can log in with our token. So this is when we have a token, and uh, if we don't have this token, we need to use. We need to uh, log in the user with a password uh, and the email address. Okay. So basically, this function handles two scenarios here. 
Uh, one is when you're trying to log in with email and password, and another one, uh, you're trying to log in with the uh, token, okay? So let's try to reload. Since we already have a token here at the backend, uh, if you go to the application, but this token is not saved to our cache. Uh, if I try to reload the page, as can see, the token is invalid. This token is invalid. So let's try to tr log in again. Password, not a password. Invalid credentials. Let me try to use this one. Okay, so now I'm logging in, and if I try to reload this page, as you can see, I'm logged in, right? I try to reload. I should hide this. So as you can see here, it's not working. You don't have to log in every time, right? So that's basically uh, the, the, the basic logic to to do to handle uh, your credentials here the authentication process you log in with your email and password and another way you also uh, authenticate the users with the token here okay so basically if I try to get rid of the token uh, from the application and uh, what if I try to delete it? And uh, I try to reload the page. I think it should bring, yes, it should bring you back to the login again. Okay, so let's try to log in here. Okay, and uh, I think that's a. Uh, that's the basic, uh, the basic structure of this application, as you can see here. So we can make it working like this way. Uh, maybe a better way to do it, because every time I reload the page, I have a login page loaded here. So this is uh, not very good. Maybe I can fix it here. Okay, so to fix this part, I think I need to uh, I need to move this code, this created function here. So let's get rid of it and go to go to the router and before. So before each router, and uh, I'd like to check mm, what should I do here. So basically, we grab the token here, and if we have token and user, let's get the user cost. Okay, so this is the, if the is not authenticated, and if it's not auth, if we have token and is not authenticate, we're trying to log, we're trying to log in, okay? So I need to make this uh, async function. And here I'm going to use uh, await. and um, change it to is auth and here after we logged in we try to get this again is auth because if we log in here uh, we should so let's try it here let me check if this can get rid of this uh, issue here so if I try to reload the page 
there is no lock in here, but it seems like it has have some issue. Cannot read undefined of dispatch. Okay, uh, in our store router, uh, I need to use not this store, not here router. So store, I cannot use this. So store dispatch. Let's reload. Okay, so you don't have this uh, login. Uh, so you try to reload the page, you don't have a login while you're trying to log in with the token, right? Uh, you don't have anything here, and then you log in. Okay, so this solved the issue, and I Right now you have basically, basically you have a, hmm, I logged out, you are logged out. Oh, okay, I think we have some issue with the logout part. Okay, so I think we need to also update the logout function a little bit. So as you can see, every time I log it out, and that seems like the page is going to be reloaded because uh, when we logged out, we, we, we didn't clear the token in our application. So if you log out here, you still have this, this token here. Remember, we still have this token uh, in our local storage. So that's why we need to update our logout function a little bit. So in the store, let's try to find the logout function. So here, trying to log out and if we log out successfully I'd like to set our token to uh, empty value so basically this empty value is going to be a false basically as a boolean is a false value okay so basically this is going to clear our token so this is my way to do it and also we need to remove it from our backend because we saved the token in our cache, right? And uh, in our logout function here, I like to try, let's say, catch error. So here, I'm going to do is this dot cache. I'm going to uh, remove the token from our cache, right? Because this is, this token is the key. And return. Um, return object. Success. It's true as a message. Uh, you in log it out. This is the if there are an error. So I don't think we have we're going to have an error. So if we have an error, that's because this token is invalid, right? So normally we don't have a situation like this, so I'm going to pass it here. Or let's just return uh, success. So basically, anyway, I'm going to return this. So it's going to always be successful. Let's format it. I'm not sure if we don't have a key uh, in the cache and this is going to ca cause any error, okay? So basically we remove the token from our cache and then we return a successful message to the end user. So at our front end, uh, we get the success message 
So this basically this condition so never happened. It's going to because we returned uh, always return a successful message. And uh, where is my store? So here we can remove this and this. And uh, we basically uh, remove the token from our local storage. And uh, we, uh, we also sell the user to null. And uh, we basically redirect our application to the login page. So this is our login function. OK, so let me reload this page. We have a token here uh, in our local storage. And it should log in, right? And right now, if I try to log out, and it bring us back to our login page, and then we can log in again, maybe with Karen, and password. OK. This is not a valid email address. I should copy the email address. OK, so log in with Karen, and we can log out successfully. OK, so basically this uh, can solve uh, the most important issues in, in this application and uh, about this project. OK, and uh, you should have a basic structure. So for a for application like this, so uh, you have the basic structure, and uh, you can start build your application, add more applications, and basically you can create a application to manage your users. You can create a users to your database, right? So all of this stuff you can do in this application, and this is basically show you how to build the basic structure and uh, you can build the content for your application. Whatever content you'd like to build, you can add it here very easily. And this, uh, this project is basically to show you the most fundamental stuff you need to master, and uh, you can build uh, a lot of stuff like this. Maybe let me show you an example here. OK, so here is an example. So how you can use this project? Okay, as you can see, this is very similar to the application we are building uh, in in this project. Okay, so here I have an application for approvals. So as you can see, I have some users, and uh, if I try to log in with my email address, and the password is a password, so I can log in right. So after I logged in here, uh, first of all, I have a dashboard here. I have a summary data. So basically, I received a approval request, and I sent two requests to other users. So basically, this is very detailed stuff you need to design your process, your application like this. So this kind of project is basically case-by-case -case stuff. But the basic structure, as you can see, is very similar. Uh, we have a log in, log out, and we have dark mode, light mode, and uh, this is our applications. Like for the users, I have a users table. I can create new users, right? I can create admin user. So maybe say name is YouTube. I can uh, have a title. And, uh, let's say YouTube at uh, gmail.com. I can put a phone number here. And we can create a new user. And uh, so as you can see, I have the, this YouTube user has been created at our backend. And the password is generated uh, for this new user. So we can edit a user. So as you can see, we can delete a user from the database, uh, deleting this user uh, from the database. So as you can see, so this is our CRUD application. So basically, I did the CRUD application project in 
I think it's in Live Coding Project 10, okay? So you can find all the details and how to do that part. And also you can search maybe for Crash 10 uh, in your application, so to find a user like this. So this is a typical CRUD application for the user management, okay? All right? So this is what I mean. You can use your imagination and then you can do almost everything uh, in your head. So basically you can translate your ideas to an application like this. And uh, for the approval process, what I did, uh, I have an application called received. So if I received some request from others, so as you can see, this for this request is from Ashton and Lucy. Right now it's open. So I basically I can approve it, right? Also, I can reject it. And maybe I can even forward it to someone else, right? So similar thing like this. And uh, it can get very complicated, I have to say. So this is the record I send to other people. So, so basically, uh, this is a very quick demo and uh, this is a very uh, typical project, so typical application you can use. Uh, you have a lot of uh, use cases, I have to say. Uh, it's, it's basically according to your, basically different people have different requirements for the application, so I cannot make applications to suit all requirements and I cannot do that. But uh, you can do that for your own application, right? If you can do uh, something like this. And this, pro this, this example is, right now is not completed. I'm trying to design it. And uh, as you can see for this history view, I haven't tried, haven't done this part right now. But right now I have the user management system and I, I can send, uh, I can create a new, re uh, like I can create a new request for approval. I can select some users. I can assign this to some user. Maybe this is a this is a request test. So I can create a request and send it to these approvers. And at our backend, if you go to the approvals, I basically assign this uh, request to three users, right? And these three users, they, we're going to see the request and then going to approve it or reject it or forward it to somebody else. So basically that's the logic for this uh, approval application. And uh, that's a good example to, to, to practice, uh, I have to say. Okay, so I think this is the uh, end of this video and uh, this should bring, and this I think this is the last part of this project, okay? Maybe I'm going to see you in the next one. Okay, bye-bye.